Crash Course Instrumentation, Episode 10, Electrically Common versus Electrically Distinct. Welcome back to Crash Course Instrumentation. Today we're digging into a deceptively simple question. Are these two points in a circuit electrically the same or not? It might sound like a detail, but understanding this is crucial for everything from proper meter placement to avoiding ground loops and designing safe systems. Electrically common equals same potential. Two points are said to be electrically common if there's little or no resistance between them. In other words, their voltage difference is zero. Think of it like a copper bus bar or a ground plane. All parts connected to that point are at the same electrical potential. You can run a wire 100 feet across a panel, and as long as it's low resistance and securely connected, both ends are electrically common, even if they're far apart physically. This is why we can say, for example, that every terminal tied to a common ground rail is at zero volts relative to that point. Even in analog instrumentation systems, all devices often share a common ground reference, meaning their signals are all measured relative to the same electrical baseline. But there's a catch. Electrically common is not always perfectly identical. Long runs of wire can introduce small resistance. Under high current, even a tiny bit of resistance can create voltage differences. That's why we use star grounds, twisted pairs, and bonding bars in proper design. In digital circuits, electrically common points are also critical. Logic circuits often rely on a shared zero-volt reference. If the reference shifts between parts of the circuit, logic levels can become unstable, and you'll see false triggers or missed signals. Electrically distinct equals different potentials. On the flip side, electrically distinct points have a measurable voltage between them. That means energy could move from one point to another if a conductive path is created. This is the whole point of voltage measurement. If your two test points weren't distinct, your meter would read zero. This comes into play when measuring across a load, checking across power rails, or validating supply voltages. But here's where it gets interesting. Even two grounds can be electrically distinct. For example, the grounding rod at one building might not be at the exact same electrical potential as another across a parking lot. This is why ground loop isolators exist, to prevent unintended current flow between systems that should be isolated. Also, keep in mind floating references. In some systems, like battery-operated circuits or isolated sensor loops, your voltage readings can go wild unless you establish a known reference point. In those cases, your multimeter might read nonsense, or worse, damage something. Instrumentation relevance. This concept is critical when placing a voltmeter across a load, make sure you're not measuring across two electrically common points. Diagnosing grounding issues or signal interference. Designing loop-powered transmitter circuits. Setting up analog input cards in PLCs. Here's a pro tip. Always check continuity and voltage when troubleshooting. A wire might look connected, but have a bad crimp, broken conductor, or oxidized terminal. A continuity check can confirm the connection, and voltage measurement tells you if energy is present or being dropped unexpectedly. In 420 MA loops, electrical commonality defines how we wire transmitters, controllers, and power sources. The loop only works if the current has a continuous, uninterrupted path from source to load. In some advanced systems, such as differential input analog cards, the signal wiring deliberately avoids sharing electrical common with system ground to reduce noise and interference. Visual example, let's say we have a 24-volt DC power supply. The negative terminal is tied to chassis ground. The metal frame of your panel, the DIN rail, and the negative side of every sensor powered by that supply those are all electrically common if bonded correctly. But if you go outside that panel, to another building, another system, that same metal rail might now be electrically distinct from your reference point, even if it's physically similar. Another common example, a shielded cable carrying analog signals. If you bond the shield to ground at both ends, current may flow through the shield if the two grounds are at slightly different potentials, causing ground loop interference. Best practice? Bond the shield at one end only. Final takeaways. Electrically common means same voltage. No energy would flow between points. Electrically distinct means different potentials. Energy could move if connected. 
Always check with your meter. Don't assume based on labels. Confirm with measurement. Use good wiring practices, short runs, clean bonds, and signal isolation when needed. This stuff isn't just theory. It's the key to designing systems that work, stay safe, and stay accurate. In our next episode, we'll put this knowledge to work by exploring how voltage drop appears across loads and how to use your meter to trace energy through a circuit like a pro. Thanks for watching Crash Course Instrumentation. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And check out the open source Modiel PDFs by Tony R. Kupalt to learn even more. See you in episode 11.